when I set off, my my aim was relatively straightforward. It, it was it was in two parts. First of all, I wanted to do it anyway. I always had, so I was determined to do it for my own benefit and to to, to do that journey because I enjoy that sort of thing. And secondly, to demonstrate to anybody who is interested that just because you've got Parkinson's doesn't mean to say you can't do the things you want to do. And if you should you should try and live your dreams as best you possibly can, even though it's quite tricky. And of course, two years ago it was a bit easier than it is now. And that's what I did. So I set off on the journey, kept a bit of a blog, did, published one, my, my progress on Polar Steps and had a small following of people who were interested in what I was doing, which is fine. When I then came back to the UK two years ago, I met Rob Hayward, who's a, a I think you wouldn't mind me saying this, not the world's biggest filmmaker, but he's, made, he's, he's a short filmmaker. And he said that he was very interested in what I did, saw some of the footage I'd taken, and out of the blue said, well, let's make a documentary, let's make a film about it. And I thought, well, that's not a bad idea. It, it sharpens the focus. And that, combined with um, meeting Omotola Thomas from Parkinson's Africa through Cure Parkinson's, which you'll be familiar with, it became apparent that there was a much more of a story than just me and my own uh, concerns and issues with Parkinson's. But there's a whole range of stories that are much the same, but embedded in these different countries I've been traveling through. And I would get the opportunity to meet people who have certain experiences which are the same or certain which are very different to Parkinson's. And it's something which I think needs to be told. And that's really what I mean to do now. So I've, I've got a, a route, again, hugging the West Coast of the continent pretty much till I get to Zambia, where I will be visiting people who either have got it or care for it or are trying to do something about it in the various countries along the way. And what kind of a challenge will it be for you physically to do that? Well, uh, to be honest, I didn't think it was going to be much of a challenge at all because all I'm doing is driving along the road merrily and it's something I enjoy doing. In fact, this first couple of weeks while I've been sorting my life out here, it's, it's, it's made me sharpen my mind a bit and it's going to be jolly difficult because I'm simply not as strong as I used to be. I'm much slower than I was two years ago. My condition is generally getting... It doesn't get better; it gets worse, and um, and everything is just much, that much more challenging. And I and I'm I'm very conscious that um, whilst I'm trying to do this journey by myself, I can only do it with people around me who can help me, either that I meet along the way or by people coming out and spending a bit of time with me along the way. Um, it's it, it's it's going to be quite a tough challenge. You hope along the way, as you say, to highlight. Uh, the, the the difficulties that people with Parkinson's are facing uh, and presumably in the countries you're visiting they are bigger challenges even than you and I face in the UK. Yeah well we, we the, the thing about Parkinson's is the, the West understands it pretty well we have a reasonably aging population there's lots of spare cash around the drugs exist and there's lots of research going on to make things better that goes as far as the Mediterranean. South of the Mediterranean doesn't seem to occur at all. I don't know about South America and the rest of the world. And there are people with Parkinson's who we know about who are treated very, very differently to us in the UK. And there is a stigma associated with the disease because there's no known cause, there's no known cure, and it manifests itself in a, in a pretty sort of unpleasant sort of way where people have no real bodily control over, them, over what they're doing and they shake and shiver and all the sort of stuff we know about. And that's a thoroughly unpleasant thing. And so they are ostracized by their own communities. And I've heard of stories where people have been locked in their homes and their families have left them because they've been worried about catching it or being associated with it and they want to distance themselves. And people are left to die and because they can't fend for themselves. There are some places where drugs are available, but they have to buy them and they're very expensive. There are other places where they're simply not available. And there are other places, again, where people don't even know they've got the condition because the knowledge is not there. People just don't know what they're, what they're talking about. And so there are people having a thoroughly more horrible time who um, need help. And you will obviously be trying to look after yourself as best you can. Have, have you got medical advice along the way? Have you got enough drugs, for instance? Are you taking a uh, nine months supply of Cinemet? I've got six months supply of Cinemet. And the other three months are gonna get sent out to me when somebody comes visit me. I've got a, a trunk the size of, well, a trunk <laughs> full of full of tablets, which um, which I, which I'm very dependent upon. Um, and yes, I, I, I will feel slightly awkward knowing that my van is full of these drugs, and I'm visiting people who can't get their hands on them. But um, such is the nature of the game. And and, and I and, and by drawing attention to the plight, the plight's not quite the right word, but the situation these people are in, 
will will go a long way towards dispelling the root the 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 the, the myth about the disease. It's, it's, it's straightforward as we know a straightforward neurological condition. There's nothing clever about it. It is fixable to a certain extent. You can make people feel better with the right drugs, and it's no, there's no there's no magic or anything suspicious about it. It's just a question of looking after people as best we can to make their lives more bearable while they're going through this horrible time. Well, we'll be trying to keep up with you on your journey um, and hoping to get some bulletins from you. So really good luck. I uh, hope it goes well. Thank you very much.